Thank you for joining us today at the Global Summit on War and Cancer, organized by the Institute of Cancer and Crisis and Onco Daily. I am Jamara Gelian, and I am currently the CEO of the Institute of Cancer and Crisis, and I'm really honored to be here. Today, I want to give you an overview of our institute, our mission, and the initiatives that we are taking to tackle the profound challenges presented by cancer. Cancer continues to be a global health crisis worldwide, affecting millions of lives every year. So according to GlobalCon, 19.3 million new cancer cases occurred in 2020, and the global cancer burden is expected to be 28.4 million cancer cases in 2040, which means a 47% rise from 2020. And of course, the emotional, physical, and financial toll on individuals and communities is immense. So how was the Institute of Cancer and Crisis founded? What were the motives and reasons for that? Two critical events that occurred in recent years helped to highlight the need for the ICC. So first one was the COVID-19 pandemic, and the second one was Second Nakorna Karabakh War. So these events showed how urgent it is to help people with cancer during difficult times and made it clear that we need to be ready, strong, and work together so people with cancer can get the care that they need. Our mission is threefold. First of all, we want to raise awareness about barriers to cancer prevention, care and diagnosis in crisis affected settings, then to explore and mitigate the impact of crisis on cancer patients and care, and of course, conduct research and advocacy. So at the Institute of Cancer and Crisis, we recognize the unique challenges that individuals and communities face when battling cancer during times of crisis, and we aim to shed light on these challenges and work towards finding effective solutions. So when talking about our objectives, collaboration is at the core of our approach. We believe in the power of shared experiences and knowledge, and also by fostering collaborative relationships with cancer centers and professionals from different disciplines, we can pull our expertise and resources to develop effective strategies for providing adequate cancer care during crisis. I want to talk a bit about our um, team. So first of all, the creation of our board of directors was the initial milestone in establishing the Institute of Cancer and Crisis. And as you can see from this slide, our board consists of experts from different fields, including policymakers, medical oncologists, scientists, psychosocial workers, and professionals with very diverse backgrounds. So following the establishment of our board of directors, the next step was to form a dedicated team. And as a young organization striving to make a difference, we recognized our financial constraint and decided to call for volunteers. And we are incredibly grateful because to have attracted a group of passionate and self-motivated individuals, each bringing their unique backgrounds and expertise to the table. So I want to move on and talk uh, a bit about research conducted by the ICC. Before giving an overview of ICC research, I want to take a moment and thank Dr. Stella Arakelian, who is ICC research lead. Dr. Arakelian coordinates all research activities and provides guidance to the team. And also she ensures adherence to research protocols and ethics and ethical guidelines and monitors the progress of research projects and then helps to analyze research findings and draw conclusions. So given our organization's location initially in Armenia, it was natural to initiate our research efforts first there. So particularly considering the challenging circumstances we face due to 
the war and the COVID-19 pandemic by that time. So conducting research in war affected regions yielded to publications highlighting the significance of the work that we started. Now we are expanding our research scope to include other countries as well. So our current, I will bring an example, for instance, our current ongoing study focuses on the role of financial toxicity on mental health of cancer patients, and it will be conducted simultaneously in different parts of the world. And the, the expansion allows us to gather a broader perspective and collaborate with international partners, further enhancing the impact of our research endeavors. So I want to introduce a few of our papers published in recent years, and uh, Dr. Gewalk talked about this one. Uh, so this paper on cancer disparities in war-torn and post-war regions was published with the collaboration and support of Princess Dinamarit of Jordan, and this important research really sheds light on the challenges faced by individuals affected by conflict in accessing adequate cancer care and highlights the urgent need for global action. And this one was published in 2020. So, and then before moving to the following paper, I want to extend our heartfelt thanks to Robert Peter Gale for his invaluable support in publishing this commentary in Lancet Oncology, raising awareness about the humanitarian crisis in Nagorno-Karabakh. Nagorno-Karabakh faced the humanitarian crisis due to blockade by Azerbaijan, and the blockade led to starvation, collapse of public transportation, limited access to healthcare, and international organizations, together with medical community, we warned of the risk of genocide and issued alerts. So please feel free to visit our website and to explore our published works showcasing the research conducted by the ICC. And don't miss Dr. Stella Rakelian's talk later on where she'll discuss uh, one particular research that was conducted by the Institute of Cancer and Crisis on evaluating the accessibility of cancer care services for patients from the conflict-affected region of Nagorno-Karabakh. So uh, then in response to the current global situation, we organized uh, a global summit on war and cancer. And the purpose was to bring together leading experts, esteemed researchers and passionate advocates from across the globe. And following the global summit on war and cancer, we are planning to publish a resolution addressing the impact of war on cancer. And this resolution, will serve as a guiding document outline, outlining our shared commitment to addressing the impact of war on cancer and providing actionable steps toward improving care in conflict zones. And by publishing this resolution, we aim to amplify our collective voice and inspire global action to create a positive impact, a positive change in the lives of individuals affected by the intersection of war and cancer. Thank you very much for your attention.